There is a country, and in that country there is a political system with various levels of power in an attempt to stop any one person from coming to control. However, all those levels of power are dominated by two parties, including the judges. So if one can control all those levels, one can control everything. Now in that country, there is a man who is likely to take power away from the ruling party. This man's name is Donald Trump. He serves the party that isn't in power, and it would appear that the ruling party is moving against him, or perhaps he's just a crook. But surely the rest of the world, given that America dominates the world, needs to have some sort of comfort that taking this guy out is justice and not politics. Now, there's been an interesting development in this process, and I want to talk about it. So Donald Trump is a property developer. He owns something like 16 golf courses, the penthouse apartment on the Trump Towers on Fifth Avenue in New York, which is arguably some of the best real estate in the whole world. He owns a sprawling mansion in New York State, which Muhammad Gaddafi or Colonel Gaddafi once spread his enormous tent on the lawns of and stayed there. And he's always made his properties to be something of a show. But the, the jewel in the crown is Mar-a-Lago. So it's this enormous property on Palm Beach down in Florida, right? And what Donald Trump does is he buys things that no one really knows the value of. And then he being himself says, it's amazing. It's awesome. It's huge. One of the greatest. I think it's the best. I really do. And he does everything he can to try and improve the value so that no one can really know what it's worth. And indeed, it's his job as the director of a company to maximize the benefit of shareholders. And his job is to try and make the properties worth as much as appear to be worth as much as they can. So when he sells them, he gets the maximum number of dollars for it. So he once had Michael Jackson stay next door to his penthouse apartment in, in New York. And like I say, he had Colonel Gaddafi stay on the lawns. And I think he's had uh, Abe Shinto, the late Abe Shinto, uh, and the Premier of China stay at Mar-a-Lago. So these things, are, they're not houses, they're not buildings, they're events, they're occurrences, right? But as a director of the company, he has also a duty to fairly disclose and report the activities of that company. And a judge, a, specifically a Democrat, what do they call attorney general in America? A, a, a attorney general for the Democrats has brought charges against the person that's about to unseat her party from power of fraud. And a judge, a Democrat judge, has made a ruling. Now, a ruling pre-trial. That is, he thinks things are so honest and upfront and obvious and factual that they don't need to go to trial. They can be reported as facts before a trial. I don't think such a thing happens here, but if it does, that seems spurious, especially given their political opponents in the, upcome, uh, in the lead up to an election. And this is the guy most likely to rob them of power. I mean, that seems obvious to anyone that looks at it. Specifically, he has said that Mar-a-Lago is worth between 18 million and 27 million or something like that. But we could say 18 million, right? That's the lowest he said. And, and he's a judge and you can report these things in the news. Now we don't have to use quotes, they're facts. He, he's saying that Donald Trump has committed fraud. Now Mar-a-Lago has been valued by Forbes at 325 million. And that's using eight independent experts from real estate agents down there and also some market analysis. Now that's a long way from 18 to 27. I mean, that's well over, it's like 15 times 27. Or my, check my maths on that, please. Okay, Donald Trump may have said it's worth 400,000 or something, but hey, I mean, it's his job to try and sell it for as much as it's, it's worth. He's got to balance that with his duty to report fairly. This seems uh, rather spurious and vague sort of thing to take out the, the what a lot of people are saying is the president elect already. I mean, it sounds as though he's going to be running against basically a dead man and he's very popular amongst the Republicans already. This is a hell of a thing for a judge to rule without trial against someone that's going to take the presidency that he got the value of a very difficult to value property wrong. Now, there are some other things around the square meter ridge of the penthouse apartment in New York. They're going to play out. I'm going to try and follow this case very closely. But how is this not the absence of independence? I mean, it's not, it's not just enough to be independent. You have to appear to be independent. Clearly, this judge isn't. And the statement that the thing's only worth 27 million, he bought it for 10 and immediately spent five. So he, 15 million he bought it for in 1986, I believe. I mean, that's 36 years, 37 years. Yes, things go up in value in 37 years. This seems crazy. I'm gonna be paying very close to attention. I'm not saying that the courts are definitely corrupt. I'm saying they lack independence. They appear 
to lack independence initially just because of the Democrat Republican thing. And this ruling just proves it further. So pay close attention to this one in the lead up to the election. Honestly, for what it's worth, I think it just does Trump an amount of favor. And people that hate him, hate him already. And people that love him, love him already. But if Trump doesn't have to win the trial, he just has to prove to the undecided voter or the voter that might not turn up to vote that something important is going on and he's the guy to fix it. I think that he'll turn this to his advantage. All right, thanks guys, chill.